Hey, this is Greg, and I want to show you a trick I use for stereoizing guitars. So my favorite way to get a wide stereo soundstage on guitars is usually double tracking, having a totally different performance on the left and on the right side. Because there's going to be natural human inconsistencies and differences in the subtle timing and tones of the left and right, you get a really wide soundstage. That's not always possible, though. Sometimes you just have one mono guitar performance, and you still want a big wide sound. In the case of this session I have pulled up right now, this was a live performance. So there's only one guitar player in this band. This is from the Organ Machines, the song Gold Room. And we filmed this, we performed it live, and we wanted to stay true to that live performance. So there's just one guitar part with one mic on an amplifier. So how do we get that stir and wide? Well, let me show you what I did. So you'll see I actually have two guitar tracks. This is the amp track, and this is actually a DI track. I've talked in other videos about why I think it's important to take a DI. This is another really spectacular use for DIs, in my opinion. So here's what it sounded like with just a mono single track guitar. So it sounds cool. The guitar player Derek in the Organ Machines really uses a ton of reverb and effects. This kind of a spacey ambient sound is really cool and unique. And I want to preserve that. And to me, having it big and wide actually makes that surround you more and enhances that. So I took a DI and this DI, I'm gonna bypass all the effects I have on it, which as you can see is quite a lot. I'm gonna not go too far into detail for the purpose of this video, try and keep it relatively short. And this DI was after the pedal board. So all his reverbs and pitch shifting and effects that he likes to use is already on here. Here's what that sounds like by itself. So not really anything you'd want to use. It's a guitar DI, but with a bunch of effects on it. So what I did is I ran that through an amp sim I actually used this Ampeg, which is technically a bass amp, but it's really cool on guitar too. I bypassed the recording chain, which in this case, in this plugin, that's like the cabinet and the microphone in the virtual chain. And they're all bass centered because it's a bass plugin. And I loaded up some other impulse responses that are meant for guitar. Ended up settling on these guys. Here's the tone we ended up with with that. So what's really significant about this and the core concept of this whole thing is that that tone is extremely different from the tone we record off the amp. I'll play you the amp tone solo. The amp is really distorted. It was driving pretty hard. It's a smaller tube combo driven hard into distortion. And we have a much cleaner, warmer, rounder sound on the DI. And for this to work, I find that it helps to have as different sounds as possible for the two signals. What you really want to avoid is the monoing out in the middle, which happens when the two signals are too correlated with each other. If you have, for instance, the same exact tone and you pan one hard left and hard right, they're going to sum to just mono center. The more different you can make each one, the more decorrelated they'll be in certain frequencies and the more stereo width you get. So I tried to get them as different as possible while still coming together to make a whole big sound and sound cool and fit the song. So here's what they sound like together. So a much fuller sound than either one combined. The DI tone on its own might be a little muddy and bassy. I mean, it's using a bass amp. And the amp tone is maybe a little over distorted, maybe a little harsher in the high end that I usually use for one tone. But bringing them together kind of becomes this whole thing. And then when you pan them out, you get a really wide sound stage.
almost to the point where it sounds like it's double tracked. And the reason is because they're so different, not only in the EQ, but also in the distortion. Having the cleaner sound over here, you get a lot more definition on the notes and the picking and having more distortion, the reverb tails are more saturated and you get more reverberation and more sustain on the right side. So it becomes this kind of interesting give and take where it's moving around in stereo. I'll show you in this section, you could really hear that. Listen, you can hear the plucks of the notes on the left and the sustain is more on the right. This is obviously a very, very affected guitar tone. This is not something that would maybe work for a drier, cleaner type style, but the same concept of having as different signals as possible on the left and right still works. The important thing is you want them to be different, but still phase coherent where it matters. But the more different they are, the less phase interference you're going to get between the two. And that's what gives you that sense of stereo width without it sounding crappy when you sum it to mono. Now I'll show you just the mono guitar that we originally had in the mix. Then I'll show you the stereoized version I did with the DI. And here is stereo. To me, that really opens up the guitars. It also leaves some more space in the middle for the drums and the bass to be heard a little more clearly. I've muted the vocal just to focus on the guitars, but those are able to live more in that space. So there you go, stereoizing guitars with a DI and an Amtrak.